following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Number 22, return, also called <coughs> the crown of life, the truth. We are arriving at the end of the series and uh, the 22 arcana of the tarot. And uh, we will seal this uh, series or seminar with the letter Tav, which as you know means seal, mark. We have to explain about the fall and the rising of the soul in order to deeply comprehend this arcanum. Remember that the previous one was the 21st related with the fool in which uh, the initiate has to decide to take the path of the self-realization or the path into Cliff Foth, which is the lunar path, with which generally most of humanity take. So here we see about the mystery of Adam and Eve, since everything in all the arcana are always related with these two polarities that we had to manage, to control, to master. Remember that Adam and Eve represent different aspects in esotericism. Ida Pingala, Od and Ob, Yan and Yin are those uh, polarities related with Adam and Eve that, as you know, in the book of Genesis, explain how they were ejected from the world of Yesod. Because if we want to find Adam and Eve, we have to go directly into the ninth sphere, which is Yesod. And Yesod is the fourth dimension, the ethereal world, which the Bible calls Eden, in which we find the sexual power of the Holy Spirit 
it is important to remember that this uh, upper triangle on the top of the tree of life, Keter, Chochma, and Binah, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, control the three triangles that we find in the tree of life. The first triangle is controlled by Keter, the second is controlled by Chochmah, and the third by Bina. And they are controlled always in the column of the middle. That's why when we talk about Yesod, we talk about Bina, which is the Holy Spirit, intelligence, which is a sexual power. As you recall, when Adam and Eve were ejected from Eden, Yesod, where after, of course, was after they, uh, I mean, Adam was divided into two polarities. Before that, remember that Adam, who was in Yesod, was both polarities and and androgynous. But then when it was divided in Yesod, which is Eden, you find there the two polarities separated into male, female. <coughs> These two polarities are related, of course, with sex. And if you observe man and woman, you will see that the difference is precisely in the sexual power. Beginning with the three brains that we know, the three brains are the vehicle of the three primary forces, which express themselves in any of the three triangles. That's why, that's why the triangle has always three sephiroth, because each one of them expresses the power of the three primary forces. So when you see, for instance, the head of man or woman, you find that it is related with the father, and that the difference is in the throat Because the sexual power in the sexual glands, when any of them enters into maturity, change the, the voice, the power of the voice, which is related, of course, with the sperms and ovum. In the heart, or the area of the thorax, you find the difference between men and woman, which is precisely related with love, which is always attributed to Chokhmah, the second sephira. And of course, is the breast. The breast are those sexual organs which are fully developed in the woman but which are atrophied in the man. And below, in the sexual organs, which is related with Bina, and then you find that both forces of Bina are active in men and women. The sperm and the ovum through the sexual organs. So that's why when we talk about the division of uh, the two polarities, or the separation of the two polar polarities, you find that that is related with Bina, the sexual power of the Holy Spirit. Because Bina expresses that power in the three brain. Because, as we said always, the Holy Three Unity, or Three Trinity. 
which is always one. Keter has Chokhmah and Binah. Binah has Chokhmah and Keter. Chokhmah has Keter and Binah. In any aspect, always we find the three. In this way, we explain and we understand why in the three brains that we already pointed, we see the, the difference. So, Eve, in this case, as you know, is always related to Yesod. And Adam to the brain. But this beautiful symbolism of the divisions and how nature works is depicted in the Sphinx. And the Sphinx, of course, which in this card is represented by the three gods of death. Yeah, excuse me, four. The four gods which are Metha, Hapi, Duamutef, and Kef, Senuf. As you realize and you observe these uh, four gods, you see that each one of them is represented a force of, uh, of the elements. The, the head of the man here, which is of course symbol of the water, the lion, symbol of the fire, the eagle, symbol of the air, and uh, the bull, or the other animal, which is uh, the monkey, which represents the earth. So the Sphinx also represents that. If you bring uh, into your imagination the different uh, symbols of the Sphinx, you find that it is a, a creature that has the face of a human being and the breath of a woman, wings of an, of an eagle, the paws of a lion, and the legs of a bull. Here you find the same symbol. Of course, the breast of a woman is a representation of mother nature. The forces of the divine mother that you find here, of course, in the center of this card, playing the, the harp. That harp is a symbol, of course, of the spinal column, which is the letter Ta, uh, I mean the letter Bav. We always uh, emphasize and repeat that the letter Bav in the Hebrew alphabet symbolizes the spinal medulla. And uh, the one that plays that is a divine mother. From that point of view, then we understand the symbolism of the Sphinx. Since when we enter always into this... Uh, studies into this path, we have to face the things. Let us remember Oedipus, that uh, myth of the Greeks, which of course has his symbolism. Like he has to face and he finds the, the things and answers the riddle of the things. And because he says that the riddle is the man, he enters, of course. But to answer the riddle of saying is the man is not just by words. To answer the riddle is to become a human being, a true man. And this is precisely the point. Because the four elements of nature are represented in the Sphinx. And this is precisely the first ordeal that anybody has to face when entering into the path, if you see in the bottom of this uh, card, you find the chakra Muladhara, a flower, lotus flower, the symbol of that, and also it could be symbol of the cross. It is because the whole work 
is synthesized on the cross. When the, the soul that enters into the path receives the doctrine as you are receiving the doctrine, immediately after, that soul has to pass for that ordeal that is called the ordeal of Dairene. But that ordeal of Dairene is not only in the beginning, but it is repeated in different steps, in different levels, in different initiations, according to the level of the, of the initiate. And that is precisely placed by Lucifer, that, as uh, you know, is the sexual potent. Lucifer, <coughs> in this case, individually speaking, within any human being, is a shadow of God. Here we are not uh, explaining about Lucifer in his higher aspects, but Lucifer within the microcosmo, within the human being. That is precisely the entity of God within us that gives us sexual strength. Without entity of life, which is here in Yesod, man cannot have erection. The woman cannot have humility. That is precisely the element that gives us that uh, or those uh, necessary elements in order to perform the sexual act. So that's why it is written in Genesis that when Jehovah Elohim, which in this case is your own particular individual God inside. Because Yahovah Elohim, as you know, Jehovah, Yov, Hava, is the representation of Adam and Eve, the two polarities. But divine, we will say Abba and Aima in heaven. Those are the two polarities of God, Yod, Hava. But those two polarities are within all monads, self-realized monads, Elohim. That's why it's called Yod, Hava, Elohim. And in many lectures, we said that this Yod, Hava, Elohim, which in this case represents all those gods and goddesses, angels, archangels, divas, or any name that you want to give unto that, which is the army of the voice, the logos. Yahovah Elohim sent always their Ruach Elohim into Yesod. Ruach Elohim is the spirit of the Elohim. And they work, as we know, in the different kingdoms in order to help the evolution of the monads in the kingdoms and eventually the self-realization of those monads when they enter finally in the human kingdom. So that's why when we say, what is, what, what is the, the essence of iron? We answer, is the Ruach Elohim of that Yahovah Elohim, which is uh, related with the fifth ray, which is called Samael, because all the angels that we call Samael, Orifiel, Sahariel, Michael, Gabriel, etc., all of them are Elohim. And all of them in themselves are 
a Jehovah Elohim that work in harmony in the universe and nature. And each one of them send the Ruach Elohim in order to help the development of those monads to become microcosmos because they work in the macrocosmos. That's why when you study those uh, Yahovah Elohim, which are beyond the solar system, in the world of Chokhmah, which is the zodiac, the galaxy, you find 24 Jehovah Elohim that work in the galaxy. Because the galaxy or the 12 signs of the zodiac represent the macrocosmos. So these uh, archangels or Jehovah Elohim that work in the macrocosmos have the duty to send the Ruach Elohim, their own spirit, their own essence, into any planet to help the monads to reach the level of mastery. Here in the planet Earth, we always talk about the 24 elders. These 24 elders of the book of Revelation, two for each sign, are related with the 12 tribes, the 12 signs. That we call, uh, of course, the 12 tribes of Israel. Remember that always we state that Israel is a, is a, is a name that is a symbol. Isis, Ra, and El. El is God. Ra is a solar force, the Christ. And Isis is that fire within the sexual force or that essence that we need uh, to develop. So when we talk about Israel, we're talking about all of those elements that we have within in potentiality. Or as Genesis says, in Egypt. Because that Israel descends from the zodiac. It is written that the essence descends from the zodiac, from the galaxy, and enters, I mean, passes through the solar system and enters into the planet Earth and finally into the physical body of any human being. We have the essence. So that essence comes from the galaxy. And that galaxy is represented by the 12 tribes, the 12 signs of Israel. So in other words, every essence contains in itself all of those 12 powers. But they are not in activity but in potentiality, and they enter. That's why you find that anyone that self-realizes himself, or attains self-realization, as the book of Revelation states in the very end, develops the, the new Jerusalem. This new Jerusalem means that there is an old Jerusalem. The old Jerusalem is precisely the people that are spiritual in, in this physical world. The terrestrial Jerusalem, which is represented by all religions, specifically in this case by Jerusalem in the Middle East, which received the, directly the name. But this Jerusalem, when you hear Jerusalem or you read Jerusalem, it refers to any religion. So this Jerusalem is in potentiality. It needs to be developed. When we develop all the powers of Jerusalem, then you have a heavenly Jerusalem, which is the diamond soul. And that diamond soul is represented by Christ, the self-realized Christ, in the initiate. Plus the twelve powers, the 12 apostles. 
which like jewels shine in the tree of life, the spinal column of the initiate. That's why you find that the New Jerusalem has 12 gates. And every gate is an angel. Then an angel, of course, is in relation with an apostle or a represent, representant of the 12 tribes. And that's why you find that it says there are 12, uh, 12 stones which are related to faculties that we need to develop. Let me read for you the 12 stones according to the book of Revelation which are related with these 12 tribes or 12 apostles. Chrysophrasus, Sapphire, Emerald, Beryl, Sardius, Jasper, Amethyst, Sardonyx, Jacinth, Chrysolite, Topaz, and Chalcedony. These are, of course, 12 stones. And it's because the civilization has to come from the very bottom, from the mineral kingdom. Remember that that uh, budata or essence, our own soul, develops, evolves from the mineral kingdom to the plant kingdom to the animal kingdom and finally to the human intellectual kingdom. <coughs> you find, of course, in astrology, the different plants or trees associated with the 12 zodiacal signs. It has well animals related with this 12 zodiacal sign. But in synthesis, always are related with four. Because you find, for instance, the lion, which represents, in this case, fire, is related with three signs. The fire in Aries, the fire in Leo, and the fire in Sagittarius. And you find the air which is associated also with three signs, or three tribes. The air, of course, beginning with uh, Gemini. Uh, the other is uh, Libra in Aquarius. Then you find water, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces, and then Earth, which is uh, uh, Capricorn, the Taurus, Taurus, Capricorn, and Virgo. Oh, but you have there the three. So you find there that the four elements of nature are related to the four, I mean to the twelve signs. Four elements to the twelve signs. So there is how all of our evolving and developing in the mineral kingdom, the plant kingdom, and the animal kingdom. And is how the soul passes into those uh, kingdoms of nature and acquires certain abilities, which in the human kingdom, the essence and the mona needs to master. Because one thing is to acquire that in the evolution, and another thing is to acquire dominion of those. And that's why when you enter into this uh, path, after you face the guardian with threshold and the four ordeals, you have to enter into the nine initiations of major mysteries, I mean minor mysteries, lesser mysteries, which is the probationary path in which the soul is tested. 
But in order to start, the soul has to pass the diarene ordeal. Because he, if he doesn't pass the diarene ordeal, he returns into the world of Egypt, into the world of the matter as a failure. And that is precisely hidden in that story of Adam and Eve. When Jehovah Elohim, which is precisely in this case your own particular individual God, which is receiving instruction of the Jehovah Elohim of nature, is there you are entering now into the human level. But the only thing that you are receiving as a human being is a physical body. Because you are coming from the kingdom of the beast. And that's precisely the, the right uh, uh, title here. Because remember that Tav is in relation with the mark, with the seal. And in this level in which we are, either we receive the seal of God or the mark of the beast. But both seals are in Yesod. It depends how do you manage that. Of course, the mark of the beast, which is always with the number 666, is easy to understand that is attributed to Tifereth. Because the essence, the Buracha, is part of the human soul, which is Tifereth. And of course, Tifereth is the son of man. That's why the book of Revelation says that uh, the mark of the beast is related with a, a number of a man. And he who has understanding, let him understand. This is the, na the, the number, 666. There is a name, too, for that beast, 666. To inquire about the name is easy when we know that that beast has seven heads and ten horns. Those seven heads, of course, are the opposite of the true man. Because the true man that has the seven developed, the epta para parshinok developed completely in him, which are the seven fires, serpents of fire developed as of course physical body of a human being vital body of a human being astral body, mental body, causal body beautic and atomic body those are the seven bodies of the true human being but the opposite of that is of course the seven heads of the beast in which the individual, the essence, the soul, does not develop those bodies, but develop or fortify, in this way, the animal elements that they have within. Those seven heads are lust, lust, anger, greed, envy, pride, laziness, gluttony. Those are the seven heads. And they are, of course, receiving strength. Because remember, well, when you study, for instance, animals, you find that the horns of animals are like antennas that receive energy in order to, uh, to serve as an instrument for nature, in order to feed nature. That's why different animals with different types of antennas or horns in order to channel energies in a mechanical way. But in this case, those ten horns that the book of Revelation talks about are related with the ten sephiroth inverted, which are called klipoth. Beginning with Malkut, which of course 
is polarizing the energy of God through fornication in a negative way. And then you find the other nine spheres, which Dante Alighieri explains very well in the Divine Comedy. So these ten horns of the beast are the ten clipothic forces, which fortify the seven heads. Then you find, then, that that mark of the beast, of course, is nothing but that mark that any soul receives in the forehead, symbol of the horns, and in the right hand, symbol of servitude, is not like many people that do not have Kabbalistic or esoteric uh, knowledge think that might be a, a microchip that somebody's going to put there and that in order to buy something they need to check that, whatever. Because they try to explain that. But that, you see, the hand to begin. In Kabbalah, we know that the hand is also attributed to Yod. When God is pointing or doing something with the head, is Yod, the, the letter Yod, which is also the phallus, which is attributed, of course, with the action. Because anything that you think, you do with your hands. The actions that you find in nature, in, in, in creation, are the actions of God, the hand of God. But is an action of his intelligence. In the same way, whatever we do is the action or the outcome of our thoughts. The beast in the head do things to the hand. And that's why we state that the mark of the beast, 666, which is, of course, six, uh, three times Sephiroth, which is the sixth Sephirah, is placed in every brain in every nervous system which are related with the three primary forces. The six in the head, the six in the heart, and the six in the sex. As we explain. Because six is you shall not fornicate. And even the number six, if you take the I, you put the E, it says sex. Obviously, that is in relation with our activity of the energy that acts with the three brains. Six, 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 six. And if in this day and age, of course, everybody is worshipping the beast because everybody is in servitude to the seven capital sins. Look, society is what it is. Society is vanity, is lust, everywhere, violence, anger, wars, hatred. But everybody, of course, justify that mark of the beast. And they even take the Bible, the Koran, and many other sacred books in order to justify the actions of the beast. And this is precisely the Antichrist. People think, oh, who is the Antichrist? He who uses the forces of Christ in the negative way, and that is the ego within. Of course, <coughs> when we forget about spirituality, and we don't care about it, even God abandoned us, and then we receive the mark of the beast, which is an inverted triangle. That inverted triangle is a symbol of the three brains, the three primary forces working for Klippoth. This is Kabbalah. This is how, how to interpret. The beast, the Antichrist, of course, in this case, is the intellect. It has very strong reasoning in order to justify the animal. He says, the men come 
through evolution. Yes, the intellectual animal comes from evolution, but not the man. The true human being has to come from a revolution, which is a revolt against the laws of evolution and devolution, but inside, not verbally, not in discussions, not in arguments. Anybody can do this. Go into the internet and turn to a forum and to write, oh, I am against evolution. Oh, I am in favor of it. But here, this is a work that we have to do within because those laws are within us. So that's precisely the point when Jehovah Elohim says to Adam and Eve from the tree that the sexual force who is in the middle of the garden, which is Yesod, you shall not eat. That's the first ordeal. But who is the one that gives unto Adam the apple? It's Eve. In this case, the diarene ordeal is in relation with the female aspect. But people, when they read literally, they think that it's in relation with a male that is going to be tested by a woman in the physical world. Of course. If I am a man, I'm going to be tested by a woman. But if you are a woman, you are going to be tested by a man. And that's the Dairene ordeal. Because that Dairene ordeal is a female force. And it's not related with certain women or certain men. It's related with a sexual force which is always female. Because in Kabbalah and alchemy, we always point. Chava, Eve, is related with the sexual organs. That's why when Jehovah Elohim took Eve out of Adam, it's written, he makes a female. But that female, of course, is polarized in both bodies. That female aspect, of course, is the sexual force of procreation. Because before Adam was procreating by itself into his own body, because it was androgynous. The sperm was entering into the ovum by itself. And the father-mother was given birth without the necessity of the sexual act because it has both forces within. But when those forces were separated, divided, and of course, behold here, it is necessary to divide the forces because that essence needs to develop. And the only way to develop that is by channeling the forces of the macrocosmos into, a, into their own body to activate those elements which are in potentiality that descended in the essence, in the burata, in the soul, to be developed. And that's why it's necessary to have division of sexes, because without division of sexes, it's not possible to activate those elements. Because it's through the sexual act that those elements are activated. But of course, Lucifer is a trainer. In the moment in which this, the, the man and woman enters into the sexual act, Lucifer is present. Because without Lucifer, can, sexual act cannot exist. It's impossible. Sexual potence is Lucifer. That's why Lucifer tempted Eve. In other words, the sexual power of procreation, which is always attributed to woman. As always we say, that the woman receives the name of Eve because after the sexual act, the woman develops nine months, the ninth sphere, you saw it, that seed in her womb. That's why she receives the name of Eve. But the man also has Eve in his, his sexual organ. And of course, as you know, the book of Genesis is clear there that none of them 
past the ordeal, the test of Lucifer. Oh, says Lucifer, you want to develop that? Well, you had to avoid the spasm, the abominable orgasm of the beast. Because if you expel, if you expel the potence of Jehovah Elohim, the Ruach Elohim, the image of God, which is that Salem in Hebrew, how are you going to develop that? God is the one that develops that. The Elohim developed that. But we have to absorb it. That's the Salem. And by absorbing it, this is how we absorb the seal of God. Now we are entering into the other hand, into the other part of this. Because Book of Revelation talks about two marks, two or two seals, <coughs> in relation with this work. The mark of the beast, but on the other hand, you find the seal of God in the forehead as well. And that seal of God, we explain in other lectures, is related with the star of David, the star of Solomon, the star of the six points. Why? Because that star has six points and six entrances, which are the symbol of the twelve forces. Six feminine and six masculine, which point us to the Arcanum 12, which is the apostolate, the 12 apostles, the 12 tribes, that we need to develop through the seal of God. Because it is written that the one that received the seal were 144,000, which make the addition of nine. And that makes always the name of Adam, the true man. And 12,000 of each tribe. Meaning that that man is going to be developed by developing each tribe, each apostle inside. That's why is there in the internet the faculties related with every tribe, with every apostle that we need to develop in order to become an Adam, Kadmon. A fair ampin, as you said in Kabbalah, the microposopy. And then you find that, that that seal of God, of course, is sexual. Because it's the ninth sphere. And when you work with that sexual seal, which is the seal of chastity, that between parentheses, chastity is not sexual abstinence. Many centuries, this humanity think that to be in chastity is to be without sex, single, in celibacy. No, that's not chastity. Chastity is the way in which men and women, Adam and Eve, the two triangles of that star of David, united in the Holy Cross, which is the representation of the letter Tav, because ancient letters Tav were simple across. That's precisely the symbol of the seal that we have to receive through initiation. It doesn't mean that we have to hang on our neck a crucifix or that we have to believe on the cross like many people think. It doesn't matter how you believe. The seal is received when you make the cross. And that cross is made when you penetrate as a man, a woman, or when a woman receives a man. And you have to follow the rules of that seal of God. Because the seal of God is given in two stone tablets. Not three. No four. Two. Why? Because it's Adam and Eve. Because they are the two forces. 
five for each one. Ten commandments that we have to follow if we want to receive the seal of God. It's not that we are going to memorize the Ten Commandments. It is not that we are going to believe in them. It's it's that we are going to make flesh and blood the Ten Commandments in ourselves. We are going to imprint the Ten Commandments in our soul by working with the cross, with the two tablets. That's why it is uh, written that the Ark of the Covenant were four cherubim, not two. Like commonly they said, there were two cherubim, no, were four. Because God is yod he bav he Four letters, the tetragrammaton. So, these four cherubim were touching each other with their wings. The wings of the spirit. Then we arrive here at the caduceus of Mercury. With the open wings of the spirit. That's the symbol of the sexual force rising. When that energy rises and reaches the level of the heart, then the wings of the angels are developed in the spirit. And this is how men and women can touch the four elements of themselves in the sexual act. It is written that (coughs) there were two couples of cherubim in each side or in each corner. Because the Ark of the Covenant has four corners. One cherub in each corner, which are these four elements. And they were in the position of the sexual act of man and woman. Meaning that there is the ark. Within the ark was precisely the staff of Aaron. That staff is a symbol of the spinal column. And also the staff, the sword. The cup. The holy grail. Or the omer. Which is the symbol of that hand full of grain within which is the manna of God, the seed, the sexual seed, which is precisely placed within the womb, within, within the uterus. When the man penetrates the woman, the hand of God is within the omer, taking the omer and feeding himself. It is written that we had to feed themselves seven times because there are seven bodies that we had to rise to take that feed, that manna. And of course, within the ark was also, as we, as we said, the stone tablets of the law. All of this is showing us pretty clear, of course, how everything was hidden within the Saha Maituna, the sexual act. This is how we receive. But that Ark of the Covenant, which is precisely the second way in which we develop the, the, the essence, the soul, is in different steps. And I repeat, is not believing in that. It's performing it. The Ark of the Covenant is a symbol of the sexual act. And all the forces. That's why it said all the 22 arcana of the tarot, the 22 letters of the Torah, are synthesized in the Ark of the Covenant. But that Ark of the Covenant is made when the man and the woman are united in sexual alchemy, in chastity. Because remember, Yod is the phallus. He is the uterus. Bab is the man. He is the woman. Yod, he, Bab, he. When the woman and the man are united sexually, when the Yod is within the he, and then Yod, he, Bab, he. Jehovah is there. 
creating. And now the holy covenant. And all that is that. But the thalem of God is in the sex. Which is in your thought. And you have to transmute it. To sublimate that. In different steps. But if you commit the crime of spilling the sexual force, if you commit the crime to reach the orgasm, the spasm in the sexual act, and then you yourself are expelled out of Eden, cast out of Eden. That Eden is precisely that voluptuousness in which God is there. Because in the moment of the sexual act, all the forces of creation are synthesized. All the fires are there. And then we, we transmute them, obviously, we develop that. But if we expel or we reach the orgasm or the spasm, obviously, is the beast there that is conquering. And that's why it's written that Lucifer gives Eve the fruit, the apple. It is necessary to emphasize here that the apple tree is that uh, tree that uh, receives the energy of the Holy Spirit. When you clairvoyantly investigate any apple tree, you discover that the same energy, creative energy that circulates in your sexual organ is the same energy that circulates in the apple tree but pure, chaste. That way, if we transmute that, obviously, we are uh, performing the, or receiving the seal of God in the steps. But if we fornicate, if we spill the force, obviously we receive the mark of the beast. So that's simple. Anybody that fornicates, sooner or later, will receive the mark of the beast. Because that is the way that the beast uses the sex. You don't find any bull, any dog, any cat, any lion, any tiger that transmute energy. The plant does it. That's why the plants are with beautiful fruits. Delicious fruits. You find the flowers, very fragrant flowers, because all the plants transmute the force. In other words, we'll say the Elohim and the souls in the plants transmute the forces in the positive way. While in the animal is different. The beast fornicates stupidly. They don't know because they are irrational. They do it only once in a while, according to the season. But we are intellectual animals, which we reach the level in which we can go into the human kingdom. But we cannot continue with the actions of the beast, because the only thing that we receive as that action is the mark of the beast. And eventually that mark will give us access or visa to clip off. To hell, infernos, the infra dimensions of nature as a failure, soul. But if we transmute, obviously we receive the seal of God. So you got that? It is very well understandable here in order to comprehend return. Because we have to return. It is, it is stated in this arcana. We have to return to God. That return to God is called in Latin religare, religion. A true religious person doesn't believe in anything. He's the one that is transmuting, that is receiving the seal of God and is uniting the soul to his own monad through the initiation. That is a true religious person. In this day and age, anybody is called religious. Because he's following or believing in some type of belief. But that is not. In esotericism, a true religious person is the one that performs this work. 
the return to the great light. That great light is the ends of all. It's Christ. This is how we self-realize. But, of course, as again we remember, Lucifer, or the tempting serpent of Eden, is given to Eve the apple. To give to Eve the apple means that through the sexual organ is how he gives the apple, the energy, the force, the power to perform the sexual act. It is okay to receive the apple from Lucifer. The problem is to bite it. Lucifer didn't say, bite the apple. He says, Jehovah Elohim knows that the way that when you taste this fruit, you will be like Elohim. And he receives it and bite it. He says, shouldn't bite it. Smell it. Transmute it. But not bite it. And of course, after the bite, he gives to, his, to her husband, and he also tastes it. Like the beast. And obviously they were cast out. Because there's no way you can receive all the powers of the 12 Sephiroth, the tribe of Israel, if you fornicate. Because the Dalem of God is within the 12. Or the 12, well, beyond Keter, Ein Sof, and the Ein. Or the Ein Sof Or. The twelve, the two hidden sephira there in the absolute that we had to develop. So then that's the ordeal of Dairin. But every time that you enter into a new initiation, you always face that ordeal. The problem is fornication and adultery. That's why the rules of this path are very delicate. It's the path of the racist age. Dangerous inside and outside. You follow your own being. You're in yourself. There is no problem. And that's precisely <coughs> the way. That's why through the initiation you receive the different phases of the sphinx. If you go into the hieroglyphics, or hieroglyphs of uh, Egypt, you find that mystery, very beautiful, represented. Let us put, for instance, the Chinese. Are Chinese uh, worshipping idols because they read a certain type of letters that when I read a newspaper, or Chinese newspaper, I don't know, what is this? But they easily read it. And sometimes it's reading something in English or in their own language. Amazing. I don't know about those symbols. But they learn it. And they know how to decipher those, those uh, symbols that we call letters. The Hebrew alphabet as well. If you read the Hebrew Bible without knowing the meaning of the letters or the language, you don't know. You just see signs. Is that worshiping idols? No. That is the way to communicate through symbols. And obviously, when you go into Egypt, you find different symbols that represent each letter as well. That's not those idols. And any, any archaeologists know that when they discovered that those symbols were saying something, when they discovered that uh, tablet, how you call the... the Rosetta, when they were written in Greek, in, uh, in, in Egyptian language, and in other hieroglyphs. So then you find that. But they didn't know. They stopped there. They should go beyond, because even the symbols are in their so-called idols, which are not idols, representations. And we were studying all the letters here that just represent this and that. Also, those symbols of those gods that you find in Egypt represent something. 
But the ignorables only see that and they think, oh, they believe that God has a head of ivies. Ignoring that that God, Hermes, Dreamer Jesus, is in relation with the air, Mercury, which is the sign that rules the air. And the ivies is another bird that represents the air. Simple. It's wisdom. Intelligence. Because the eagle, or in the four elements, represents intelligence. The head of the man is knowledge. The lion is courage. And the bull is patience. In synthesis. And that's why sometimes the sphinx not only not always have the face of a human being, can have the face of an eagle too. And you find many symbols, hieroglyphs, with the head of an eagle. But it has to be related with the air. You have to understand that. You have to study that. Of a head of a hippopotamus, the, 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 the water of the earth. And every single hieroglyphic in Egypt is pointing a certain element, certain forces that we have to understand and comprehend. It's not that they were ignorant and they were thinking that God was this or was that. They were studying this. They understood that. Because we will say then that the Ark of the Covenant is also an idol. Because it's written that you have to represent God in any symbol, in any image. But that's, of course, it is important to, to understand this. When it is stated, you shouldn't have not any image of God. It's a statement like saying, when you understand the symbols of these letters and the symbol of the Ark of the Covenant, which is the synthesis of all of this, you don't need to make any other symbol. So you shouldn't make any other symbol. But of course, they came from Egypt. And when you go to Egypt, they had the, all of the symbols there representing the, the elements. Did you hear about the god with the lion face, lion head? Courage, fire. Then you have to go to the fire and to understand that and to comprehend that. This is the way, you know, because the ancient knew very well that in the way that you read the Bible with the Hebrew characters, or you read the, the ancient Coptic letters with where the gospel were written, thank goodness there exist people that know how to read that in order to get the gospel of Judas, the gospel of Mary Magdalene, and whatever, etc. But they were even clever than that. And they left Books, you see, not only one letter. Books written in a stone. When you go to Mexico and you see, for instance, the Mayan monuments or the Aztec monuments, when you know esotericism and symbolism, you just get as, as, as astonished, overwhelmed to see a book there in your face mean that that sculpture is telling you you can write the whole book with it. Every symbol is telling you this, associated with that, etc. And then you say, my goodness, this initiate that built this really was a self-realized master. Because he is giving a book in it. But Ignoramus says that do not know anything about esotericism that already received the mark of the beast in the head, in the in their hand, because they are in the servitude to the forces of nature, they don't know anything about that. And they start making theories, sophisms, about the Egyptians. How do they build the pyramids? How do they do this? How do they do that? And when you read the whole story of Egyptian culture, it's just lies, lies, and more lies. Sometimes we are sitting there in front of TV hearing about certain people that talk about the Egyptians, about the mummies, about many things. And this is nothing truthful. Just theories. Because they are not initiates. And this is how they teach in the school. The ancients were worshippers of idols. Because the Bible says this. The Bible says that. 
when the Bible says you shall not make any idol, it's pointing to the initiate. If you don't know really how to make a book and symbol, don't do it. But if you know, do it. That's, that's a commandment for an initiate. Not for people who oh, don't believe in that. Don't believe in all, all, all of this. Believe only in one God. And they misinterpret things. Because they don't go deep into the meaning of things. And this is precisely the cause of the tyrant. You see these four gods of uh, Egypt. Mesta, Hapi, Duamutef, and Kefsenuf. It's the same sphinx. That anybody has to face. Because it's within. You have the four elements within. You have your divine mother within. In the chakra Muladhara. In that flower that is on the very bottom. This is how it's hard to erase. She, the divine mother that is playing the harp, has to rise from the chakra Muladhara. And has four petals, four elements, four forces. Because the divine mother dwells. In the four elements. And those four elements are in us. That's why it is, it is written. That because we fell, we created the ego. Now, one part of the being, who is called the guardian of the threshold, which in reality are three. The guardian of the threshold, that is the image of your defects in the astral plane. The guardian of the threshold, which is the image of your defects in the mental plane. And the guardian of the threshold of the causal, which when the seed of your ego is there, your evil will, or the, your bestial will. And then you have to face those three guardians. The first one that you face is the guardian of the astral plane. Because that's the first step. Related with desire. If you defeat the guardian, it's because you are not afraid of yourself. If you really are scared of that guardian, it's because you are scared of yourself, not of anything. You are afraid to face yourself. And who is yourself? Well, I will tell you. The beast with seven heads and ten horns, 666, that is. That's the Antichrist within has to die. But if you defeat it, you are not afraid of yourself. He said, I'm going to die myself. I have to face my own destiny. And then you enter. To be or not to be, I want to be. And then you defeat that guardian, which is the shade, or, or, or I mean the image of yourself. You pass your deal of Dairene, because you know what is chastity. You understand adultery, fornication. And then you go, you walk. But then you have to pass the four ordeals. Really with the four elements. Because every ordeal is in relation with that. And then you enter into the ninth initiation. The ninth initiation is nothing but the memory to remember or to face your past, which is in your subconsciousness. Every step that you go, you go inside the earth. First initiation, until you find the nine, which is in the center of the earth. But you are going into Malkut, because that is the probationary path, which is in Malkut. Remember that the shade of the tree of life is in Klipoth, which is within Malkut. And then you face it. Every initiation, you see th certain things in relation with heaven. Because the earth is divided in three aspects. First, the physical aspect. When you find the magma of volcanoes, hollow parts of the, of the earth, different metals, rocks, whatever how the planet is constituted, physically speaking. The second aspect is this aspect that we are talking here, related with the superior dimension. 
in this case, with a fourth dimension, with a soul. The subconsciousness of nature, then you are entering there and you are recalling all the memories of the past. Human level, animal level, plant level, mineral level. But then you discover that unfortunately your essence is bottled up within the beast. So therefore, it's also related with the third aspect, which is clip pop. And that's why the initial, when they are entering, sometimes they have beautiful experiences, and sometimes they have go to hell. He says, you see how it's related? This is the part of your consciousness related with this higher part. But look, the part that is related with this is bottled up into this demon, this head of the beast, which is in hell. And then you are descending and descending, initiation plus initiation, in the different layers. You understand that? The minor initiations, the probationary, the test in which you are realizing that and discovering yourself. When you reach the ninth sphere, and then you already know about yourself. We will say it in the subjective way. You know, but you have to fight. And then the ninth sphere opens the doors. And Lucifer, again, well, you want to become an Elohim, eh? Eve will receive. Let me give the apple to Eve. And then you receive the sexual strength in your sexual organs. And if you have to enter into the major initiation. The major initiations are related with the development of that in the tree of life. The step by step initiation plus initiation. Nobody can enter into the major initiations being single. You need the two polarities. To know about yourself in the minor and the lesser initiations, as a single you can do it. But in chastity, because this initiation plus initiation, no fornicator receives initiations. And you are tested and tested and tested until you reach the nine and then eventually you will enter into the major by being married and going up in a major initiation. But in each initiation, you always have to face the diarrhea. The master explains in the Arcanum 21 how this Geronimo, who was a disciple of uh, Cagliostro, was working very nicely and in, in, in rising in different initiations. But in the physical plane, somebody came with a diarrhea ordeal. In the meaning, it says, what? You are transmuting your sexual energy? You can receive initiation without transmuting. That's, that's brutal. You have to, to, to spill the sexual force, but in a very holy way, in a saintly way. This is the way that you enter into the initiation. So he heard the, the advice, the wrong advice of this friend of his, and what was the outcome? That he didn't pass your deal. And Eve was eating, his own sexual organ was eating the apple. And his brain, Adam, was receiving the outcome of Eve. And he was losing degrees in initiation. Do you see that? And the ordeals are subtle and subtle. And of course, when you reach the level of the mental plane, and then you receive the ordeal of the guardian of the mental world, which is in relation with the whole world, the mind. And if you succeed, these are more subtle, then you pass into the fifth initiation. And when you, if you reach the high initiation, then you have to decide your will to go in the spiral path or the direct path. The spiral path, well, your will is selfish. You still have ego. You become a Hanas Mus, and maybe will come little by little liberated of your ego, little by little. But those that take the straight path, they annihilate completely their Hanas Mus way or level. 
by not living the whole ego. That means there are many masters, they reach mastery, but they take the spiral path, they have ego. This is something that we have to understand and comprehend. The ego that was very vulgar, now is very subtle. He believes to be a saint, a holy. Likes to have followers, believers, etc. So this is how, and after that, it's even more ordeals. Because always these four elements, or four creatures of the Sphinx, are working in different steps, different levels, purifying all with the soul. No, no think that the four ordeals are one time and this is it. No more. No. The ordeals are passing one time in another time in another time in another time. Because the soul is being purified. He's like the one that is having the sword in the forge. The hammer is beating it. It's beating it. Put it in the water again and put it again on the fire and beat it again. You see, willpower, the hammer. Because that sword has to be very well templated. This is the soul that we have to template. Or temper. Yeah. We have to temper. We have to make a diamond soul. This is what God wants. He wants to have the Merkaba. He wants to ride in the Merkaba. Like Krishna. You see, Arjuna developed all the bodies, which are the representation of the four horses. Arjuna is the soul. And Krishna says, well, you need to self-realize. Now I will help you. You have to kill all your family. You have to fight against your family. All the unfaithful ones. The, the Mahabharata. And Arjuna says, what? But this is, this is the path to reach the different uh, levels of nirvana until we enter into the absolute beyond good and evil. So that's precisely the seal. The letter Tav which in Egypt is represented by the letter or by the cross tau, which is a T with a circle above, which reminds us this serpent here above, the Euroboros, which represents the letter Samech, which is precisely the energy that comes and put in activity, the force of God. That means that when you acquire that Euroboros on tap, it's because you already made the whole work. You receive the seal of God because you have there the four creatures, the four Kerubim, and you become a seraph playing the harp or the lyre, an innocent creature. That's why the letter Tav, which is the seal of God, the mark of God, is written. The letter Tav is written with two letters. Tav and Bav. Remember that the letter Bav is sometimes used as letter O or the letter U. That's why it said Tau, it's the same Tav. As we pointed there in the internet, the symbol of that in synthesis. And that bab is the spinal column. Spinal medulla. Which is telling us that if we want to receive the seal of God, we have to work with that spinal medulla, which is the tree of life. Because you know that the tree of life is precisely the spinal medulla in the physical body. But the letter Tav is made with two letters. Here, I repeat, is not how it's written or how it's spelled. It's made, the graphic of the letter Tav, you see, fine there. 
a dalet, letter dalet, which we already talked in the four lecture, the fourth lect uh, lecture of this uh, series, and we will explain that dalet is a symbol of the cross. But at the end of the letter tav, or the letter, I mean dalet, you find the nun, the letter nun, there. So here, the letter tab is made with a dalet and a letter nun. And nun, we said, the fish, the sperm, the ovum, is where the zalim of God is hidden. This nun is the heir of the throne, or the heir through the throne of God, which is the spinal column. The noon has to rise in the spinal column. That is the throne of God, because the throne of God is the cerebrum spinal nervous system. That is the throne of God. Whether is seated there the throne of uh, uh, God, our own spirit, or the beast. Right now, the Antichrist is seated there in that cerebrum spinal nervous system. That beast. But now we have to rise to sublimate the Zalem, which is within the Nun. And that's precisely the synthesis of the letter Tav. To receive the Messiah, to receive the Christ, is to sublimate the sexual energy through the cross. And this is how we reach the self realization of the being. This is how we develop the 12 tribes of Israel within, or the 12 apostles of Christ. But I repeat, through the initiation. There's no other way. Because the letter Tav means seal, mark. And the letter Tav is in relation with the cross and with the letter Nun, which is the sperm of the oven. Depending how we use those forces which we have in the sex, how are we going to receive the mark of the beast? Or the seal of God. Do you have questions? Create what? Oh, you mean physically speaking? Yes. Well, yes. if you inquire the Bible, you find that the question is, how does the couple create another being? Right. Uh, it, it came into my mind this very moment something related with the Master Samael on Beor and a disciple of his that was asking the same thing. And it came to my mind is because I had to say it. She was precisely uh, like you, asking the same question. And the Master says, why are you worried about that? He says, because if all the world come Gnostic, there will be no people in the world. And he says, believe me, the whole world won't become Gnostic. It is very rare because many are called and few are chosen. And it's written, blessed are those, remember Sarah, that were sterile? Be sterile. Because the children of the caswan or the slave, are many. But the children of Sarah were only one. Isaac, that Isaac is the, is the fire rising. So obviously, the woman in Egypt that enters into the path is not worried about to have children, which is a very holy predestination. Because for a woman, the answer for a woman is to have a child. It's a beautiful. It's beautiful. But it does It is not necessary to reach the spasm, the orgasm, in order to have children. 
it is as the same way that the man has, I mean that the woman has every month releasing only one ovum in order to be fecundated, the same way the man acquired that power to release only one sperm. But the one that does it is Jehovah Elohim within himself, the Holy Spirit. And there are many couples that because of the law, they have children that were uh, created in that way without spilling millions of sperms when only one seed is necessary in order to create a human body. Of course, in the kingdom of the beast, you know that this is how the beast multiplies. He loses a lot of seed in order to fecundate and to have two or three uh, children. I mean, talking about the irrational animals. But here, of course, when we enter into this uh, uh, path, the woman has to sacrifice that, which is very difficult. Because for a woman to have a child is the best. It's is on nature. But the woman has to understand that in order to have a child, she doesn't need to reach the orgasm or the spasm like the beast. There is, of course, in Gnosticism, a book that the Master Samael wrote called The Yellow Book, in which he advises and teaches there how a couple can have a child of wisdom. You know, wisdom, chokhma, not a child of fornication. How is performed this? Well, it is stated there that both have to have nine months without sexual activity. That's the way, like the Master says. After nine months without having sexual act, they have to perform the sexual act. But have to do in May. So they had to calculate in order to do it in May. And in that moment, they had to pray. For the nine months, they had to pray. In order to have a child. If you read the Bible, you will see how those women who were initiates, they were always praying to God to have a child. I remember, for instance, the mother of Samson. Samson. He was in the, in the temple asking for a child. Why? Because they were initiates. And that's why the archangel Gabriel appears to Mary, the mother of Jesus, announcing her that because they were initiate. She was an initiate. Initiate means that they know the mysteries of the Ark of the Covenant and they do not fornicate. They transmute the sexual energy. But in certain uh, epochs, the woman wants to have a child. Then pray, and, and, and if you follow the directions of the Master Samael, you can have a child. Right. But in the end, Sarah didn't care about it. At the age of 99, which makes the addition of 18, which makes the addition of 9 years old, she started rising Isaac in the column. This is a symbol. While Sarah, you know, and other women that don't know anything about this, have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, many children. Because they fornicate. Simple. <coughs> I said the three sixes of the beast is in relation with Tifereth. Because the soul that we have within, which unfortunately is bottled up within the beast, is part of Tifereth. Tifereth is a human soul, which always is up there, that part, with the monad, in the macrocosmos, in the zodiac, in the galaxy. And only part of it descends. That is what in Kabbalah is called Nefesh. That's the only thing that he sends. It's part of Tiferet. And uh, unfortunately become bottle up within the ego. And because it's part of Tiferet, it's part of the six. Six, six, six. And also he's referring 
to those initiates that were already self-realized and they fell because the one that fell, that falls always is Tiferet. And when Tiferet falls into the animal generation, you see, falls into animal generation because human generation is not fornication, but animal generation is fornication. So when Tiferet falls into animal generation, the beast resurrects. 666, because takes over the three brains. The cerebral spinal nervous system, the grand sympathetic, and the parasympathetic, the vagus. And then the, we are still slaves of Egypt. Question there? Can you explain the relationship of the number 666 with the six arcanum? Well, the relation 666 with the six arcanum is in relation precisely with the diarrhea ordeal. Because in the right side of the human soul, which is precisely TFRF of the Sixth Arcanum, you find the Divine Mother. That is precisely the one that in the 22 Arcanum is playing the harp. While to the left is precisely that uh, degenerated whore which is the representation of the mind, the, the, the protoplasmatic mind. You can find it in the Arcanum number six. In the right is the Divine Mother, and in the left is precisely Lilith or Nahema, either one, who is, of course, saying, come and procreate with me. What the Divine Mother says, come to my side and rise, the son of man, Isaac, in your spinal column. Of course, that's why his, his legs are underneath the seal of Solomon. You see the, the black seal, the black triangle? That's the negative aspect of the seal. That's the mark of the beast. 666, six, 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 each part of the triangle, which means a fallen soul. And that's why the Holy Spirit, which is above, symbol of the uh, Eros or Cupid is pointing against Medusa, Lilith, Nahema, which everybody has within. So at any time we are always facing the six star canon. Always. In every initiation. That's why no, not uh, everybody self-realized. Because in certain initiation, the initiate turns to the left. Now it comes to my mind again, you know. It's having the information. A friend of mine, from many years ago, he told me, I don't know why, but I'm going to tell you this. I had many years of transmutation. And I was realizing, developing many things inside of me. But the time arrived when my wife came and said, I want a child, I want a child, I want a child. Every day, I want a child. And he was, she was singing a song, I want a child. Every day, for him. And then he says, what the heck? For one time, I don't think that I'm going to lose what I gain. Only one time in order to close the mouth of my wife, because really, it's overwhelming this. I want a child. And he did it one time. And the outcome was a child. But he says, I lost there eight years of working in one night. I thought I was going to lose one, a couple of vertebrae. No, the whole thing. Because I did it consciously by my will. Now I am trying again to reach the level and it's very hard for me. He says, I don't know what I'm telling you this, but maybe it will help you. I said, yeah, thank you. Because that I want a child, I hear it many times in different places. And sometimes the man falls for that and loses. When somebody does that, loses everything. You know? Is this an accident? Because sometimes the man and the woman has an accident. And the man cannot contain himself. He's trying and he spills a little bit, some drops then can have a child. 
but he's not a child of wisdom. He's just a child that comes because he was trying to transmute it. He couldn't and, and spill some drops because in every drop, you know, it's millions of sperms. I think a child can have, but he loses some. When you fight and lose a little bit, you don't lose too much. But when you just decide, ah, I'm going to give her a child, I'm sorry. This is it. Another question? Dairin, that is written in the book of the Three Mountains by the Master Samael on the Or. Where he explains he how passed the ordeal of the Dairin. Because this is how he enters. First he is dealing and facing a certain individual that is uh, an enemy. Enter the, the Gnostic Church and he passes the ordeal. Only by conversation. But physically, he has to do something else. If you read it there in the beginning of the first mountain, you will understand what I'm talking about. Do you have another question? Yeah? Um, I have to ask you this because um, supposing um, a woman is in bed with a husband, but she's not uh, enticing him. Wait a minute, she has an abortion. No, she gets She gets pregnant, you said, but she doesn't have the child. That's right. Meaning that she loses the child. Yes. Not even the child, but she finds out in after her three months that she that the two did not really love each other. What does she do about that? Well, when the question is what happened with the seed doesn't develop within the womb, even though the woman is praying to God to have a child. Right, and she is not reaching the orgasm no. because most of well, they didn't. I don't know in the present time, but in the past, women were very difficult to reach the orgasm. Now, unfortunately, they are being taught in different ways how to do that. But usually, the man is the one that always falls into fornication, and the woman, of course, cooperates, and is very rare if she, reach, she reaches the orgasm, which is good if she doesn't. And sometimes you get pregnant by praying. But that type of, if the husband is fornicating, is spilling, that's not a child of God. But of course, it's a child that comes because of the law. Child of God is when the man doesn't spill and the woman doesn't reach the orgasm. That is a child of God, a child of wisdom. And that is not easy to have. It's very difficult. Of course, there are many times when the seeds uh, do not develop within the womb of any woman. They have these discourage, discourages, right? Miscarriages. Those miscarriages is because of karma too. Sometimes women in the past, they didn't have, wanted to have children. Now they want it. They get pregnant for a while, six months or even seven, they miscarriage because it's karma to teach them. Right. There's the law. Can you tell the bird I mean this is animal, but bird having the egg it doesn't create the chick. It's like empty. Mm. Do you understand that? Yeah, the egg because the, the when the egg is not fertilized then there is no life. You need to, in, uh, the same thing in order for us to fertilize our soul. We need to fertilize our soul by transmuting the sexual force, the two polarities, Adam and Eve, have to be in the sexual life. But believe me, 
when you are in this path and you are serious, you, you, you don't uh, start thinking in children. Because there are many people, millions, bringing children into the world. And then in this day and age, really, there's a lot of problems, a lot of... Everybody in this day and age have children because of the orgasm. All of us, without exception, we are children of fornication. It's what Jesus said in the Bible. You are children of the devil. And the lust of the devil you want to perform. Because our parents created us through fornication. And anybody, whether it's a Jew, whether it's a Christian, whether it's a Muslim, whether it's a Buddhist, is created through fornication. And they continue fornicating. So, this is, of course, uh, no more questions. We will say, to, to finish with this, that uh, holy and sacred be his unutterable name. Now that the sacred meaning of the letters have been verified, now we have to go to more occult places within if you want to perform this. Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah,